Hey guys, so today I don't have a recipe video for you, but I do have this amazing experience I want to share with you. It's a little different, but it's still keto. I'm going to take you guys to a workshop in LA hosted by my favorite podcast, Don't Keep Your Day Job. So if you're a creative person, a baker, a dancer, a photographer, a screenwriter, an actor, a comedian, a podcaster, and you want to know how to make a living doing what you love, then Don't Keep Your Day Job is the podcast for you. And if you're part of my keto fam and you love creating recipes and you love to inspire others through fitness and food and love to teach others about keto and didn't know it was possible to get paid to do the work that you love, this video is especially for you. If you'd like to to turn this keto hobby into something so much more than keep watching because I'll be sharing key takeaways from a few speakers that have inspired me to turn my passion into my career. Plus, I'll also share how I stayed keto in LA. Kathy Heller is a host and each week she encourages thousands of listeners to find their purpose in life and get paid to do what they love full time. So my friend Amy's joining me in the workshops. I live in Hemet, California, um, and we left at 5 a.m. to be able to get to the workshop at 9 a.m. For those that don't know, the keto diet is a low-carb, high-fat diet where you try to eat less than 20 net carbs a day. And for the next two days, I'll be showing you how I try to stay keto-friendly while out in L.A. So we started our morning with one bang each and split a cookie in the morning because we weren't that hungry. I was happy to see that they had a sugar-free energy drink and a low-carb seaweed snack option at the event. That was pretty interesting because like, I was not expecting that. And it was pretty interesting to note that the sugar-free energy drink was like the first to go. I was instantly drawn to the Don't Keep Your Day Job podcast because I like the idea of not having to keep my day job. But not only that, it opened up my eyes to the possibilities that are out there. One of them being that you can get paid to do what you love and you don't have to feel bad about it. By the way, if you already love what you're doing, this podcast is still for you. Because it's taught me that you should always have more than one stream of income. And why can't that one stream be something that you actually have fun doing? Not work, not something that you look. It doesn't even have to be something you love, just something fun. In this next clip, Kathy Heller, the host, is gonna briefly explain her background. When I came out here as a songwriter, and there's people writing songs, I was writing music. If I would have been like, I'm just gonna write songs, I'm just gonna busk on Third Street Promenade, I don't think I'd eat the sushi I ate. I started thinking, so how am I gonna make money, right? Well, the record label thing didn't work out, and that's good, because thinking that the only way to do something is the absolute biggest thing, and if you can't do it that way, there's nothing, that's good that that didn't work out early on for me. What I started thinking after having six day jobs in between licensing my music to film and TV and being dropped, finally the light bulb went off and I read an article about people licensing their music and I thought, oh, that's a way for me to make money with my, with my passion. That makes sense. Old Navy might want to pay me $55,000 for a song. McDonald's might want to pay me, and they did. So, like, I started doing better and better, making real good money from ads that wanted to pay me for my songs. And I was like, okay, so I'm definitely gonna spend a few days a month just writing those kinds of songs. And then, as that started to build and build and build, I was like, oh, I have all this free time now, because I'm making pretty good money. So what else can I do with my gifts? Oh, I can start a podcast. Oh, I can teach writers. Oh, I can do this conference. I'm so grateful that Kathy started this podcast because it's exactly what I needed to hear. And I feel like there's a lot of people out there that need to hear this too. We need to think about this thing that you love doing. Again, work smart. Don't work hard, work smart. This is important. You have these passions. People are like, Kathy, you're wrong. I can't make money from what I love. No, yes you can. But we need to think about who is going to pay you to do this thing. And then what are all the fun ways you can do your art? So today we're at her two-day Dreamtopia workshop in LA. She's going to have guests on stage where they're going to share their story as well as helpful tips that they've learned along the way. So in this video, I'll be sharing my key takeaways from the speakers that she brought on stage. 
So the first speaker is Andy, and he's an illustrator who has worked for clients such as Amazon, YouTube, and Nickelodeon. He's also founder of the Creative Pep Talk podcast. What I learned from him was to embrace the struggle and that pain and that uncomfortable feeling because it's going to be during those times that we're developing into the person we want to be, which I can totally relate to because I've been struggling with writing this script for this video for days. These moments of struggle that are going to help me become a better script writer. I can't let this very brief moment of feeling uncomfortable stop me from relentlessly pursuing my dreams. So the next speaker is Lily Petit, and she works one-on-one -on -one with clients to help identify and uncover emotional attachments to their possessions and helps with removing them from their home. It's kind of like an episode of Hoarders, but way more professional. What I learned from her is that you have to be real with yourself. Don't pretend everything is fine, that you're holding it together, or that you're not upset. Give yourself permission to be in your feelings, acknowledge something pissed you off, or something didn't go right, or whatever and let it have its moment and don't let it ruin the rest of your day. Joy Cho is a graphic designer, blogger, author, and founder slash creative designer of the lifestyle brand Ojoy. What I learned from her was that you have to go for the things you want. You know, I want my full-time job to be making recipe videos. It won't happen if I don't start now. I can't wait for the timing to be perfect because I'll never be perfect. There'll never be a perfect time to learn. It's only going to get harder the older I get, so I might as well start now. You learn from doing things. If you don't do them, you don't learn. So allow yourself to be a beginner and make mistakes. You know, make many mistakes and just learn from them. Just like I'm learning from all the mistakes I made editing this video. Jennifer Cohen is a best-selling author, one of the top 100 most influential people in fitness and health, and host of the Habits and Hustle podcast. What I learned from her was that mindset is everything. You have to change the current belief you have about yourself and what you're capable of. And I think that there's something called having either a growth mindset or a fixed mindset. So a fixed mindset is when you think things are just the way they are and that's just what it is. Having a growth mindset is obviously the opposite where it doesn't matter what, where you are, it's where you want to go. You are what you think you are, you can do what you think you can do, but it really starts with having that belief, having that mindset, and if you don't have that mindset, working towards getting that. Having a growth mindset will allow you to believe in what's possible and the certainty of it. You're able to reach out to the highest branch you can see. So try envisioning a future of a life that you want to live, a life worth living. I believe I'll make my own cookbook one day despite not knowing how to cook. But I believe it's possible for it to happen so I'm certain I'm going to make it happen. So the next speaker is Amber Ray, and she is a best-selling author, artist, and a big believer in wonder over worry. Because why worry about how you're going to reach your goals? Instead, wonder about all the creative steps you'll have to take to get there. What I learned from her is that we all have a gift inside of us. That gift is our unique ability to communicate with others. It's actually pretty selfish for you to not share your gift because there's probably people out there who could find value in what you have to say and in the way you say it. But we will never find out if you only ever keep your gift for yourself. I get it though. Imposter syndrome is real. But remember, you don't have to be an expert to speak about topics that you're passionate about. For example, I don't see myself as a keto cooking expert because I'm not, but I'm not going to let that stop me from talking about it. People don't look to me for cooking advice because they think I'm an expert or that I'm an amazing chef. It's because they like my unique approach of explaining how to cook. That's it. It's not tastier, it's not fancier, it's just me. So just be your unique self, don't change for the internet, and don't act like anyone else other than your authentic self. Before I went out to LA, I did some research to see what keto-friendly restaurants they would have in the area. One of them was a ramen spot, which I thought would be a safe bet because, you know, broth and protein. By looking at the soup, you can just tell it wasn't keto. But I ate it anyways. I only ate half because it was like super filling. I also had a pokey salad with it and I did not eat the salad it came with because it had some questionable sauce that I didn't want to look into because I was just so hungry. So up next is the Self Helpless Podcast. The members include Delaney who provides advice on career and relationships. Taylor, who provides advice on health and fitness, and Kelsey, a beauty guru and a feng shui advocate. And what I learned from them was to allow yourself to be a beginner. 
No one is perfect out the womb, so it's not fair of you to hold yourself to those standards. You need to give yourself permission to make mediocre things. Anything you make when you first start out isn't going to be amazing. Accept that right now. But keep in mind that it will turn into something amazing once you start tweaking it. Then before you know it, you'll have something close to perfect. Not perfect because nothing will ever be perfect, but close. So don't compare yourself to others that look like they have everything down. Odds are they've been doing that for a while and have continuously practiced their skills and have gotten better over time. I know what it's like to be afraid of failing. I remember scrolling on Instagram and liking all of these amazing photos and thinking, wow, I suck. I'm never going to be as good as them. Thank God for my sister snatching away my phone. She created my new Instagram and threw the phone back at me and told me to just do it. So I did and I sucked at it for a while, but it was through all that sucking that I was able to figure out myself and my style of photography. And I'm grateful for that because you can't allow the idea of not being great to stop you from trying. You only get better from trying things out. You can't theorize of all the ways it will go wrong. You have to just freaking do it. And then analyze what could have been done better and work off of that. So go out there and go suck at something, anything. So the next speaker is Sahara Rose. She's a best-selling author and host of the Highest Self podcast. And what I learned from her was that clarity brings action. You need to be clear and specific about the goal that you're setting out for yourself. Be specific about the type of life that you want to live and the things that you want to be doing. Because once you figure that out, it'll make it so much easier for you to deconstruct how to make that goal a reality. So don't overthink it. Don't get so overwhelmed thinking about all the specific actions you'll have to take. Just worry about the next one. So for example, I realized I love keto after being on keto for six months. I knew I wanted to do something with it, so that's why I started an Instagram. Then I went down the rabbit hole of all the different career paths I can take while pursuing my passion, that is keto. Once I realized that keto was my passion, I was able to clearly define a goal in trying to make keto my full-time job. The life I imagine for myself is a life where I get to wake up every morning and look into the kitchen and think out loud to myself, what am I screwing up today? So the next morning we had no time to eat so we stopped at a 7-Eleven and just bought a bunch of keto friendly snacks. We almost considered buying a block of cheese but then realized we'd have to carry a warm block of cheese if we didn't eat it all. So that was a no. I kind of messed up with the beef jerky because it has that pesky maltodextrin ingredient that we want to avoid on a keto diet. I ended up buying a water, a quest bar, prosciutto wrapped cheese and beef jerky. So Jeff Goins is a best-selling author who has created online courses and coaching programs to help thousands of writers every day. And what I learned from him was to listen to your life. You know, life is going to give you the same test time and time again until you learn your lesson. And it's really true. I originally started keto to lose weight and then I did a lot of researching and then I became obsessed with it. And then my face would light up whenever I talked about it to the point where my even my coworkers started calling me just keto. And it was at this point that I knew I had to do something with keto. Like life kept throwing it to me in my face and it's like, this is your thing. The second thing is find your feather. Better. The thing that you already have, the thing that you already do that makes you you, we sometimes call this your unique ability, it might be enough. You need to find that thing that makes you you. Stop thinking you're not enough because you are. Get those voices out of your head saying that you're not funny enough or that you're not creative enough or that you have nothing to bring to the table because you do. You need to accept the fact that your unique ability is enough because nobody can do things like you. Do you want to know what my feather is? My unique ability that I bring to the keto community? Well, it isn't being a teacher, a recipe creator, a coach. I'm just a person that finds keto food ideas and that happens to be Latina, and that happens to share her perspective as someone who sucks at cooking. That's my feather. And number three is to run your own race. Stay in your own lane. Don't worry with what everyone else is doing because no one is out there doing what you're doing exactly the way you're doing it. See, anybody can do a recipe video on Instagram stories, but no one can do it just like me because it's me. So the next speaker is Amy Tangerine, and she's a YouTuber, consultant, author of the book, Craft the Life You Love. And what I learned from her is that collaborations are so important. The key in this arena, okay, no matter what your business is, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And that's what it's all about. 
you should be collaborating with everyone. Any exposure to anyone's audience is good exposure. Collab with others with a similar size audience. You know, hype each other up and grow together. Don't limit yourself to collabing with people who only have a big audience. Collab with everybody. So when it comes to collaborating with people with bigger audiences, the way you can approach them is by becoming a source of value. Like how can you make their life easier or show your support for what they're doing? So the way I like to collab is on Instagram. I love shutting out amazing recipes I find online by photographing their dish on my page. If that person likes my photo enough, they'll share on their page and gain me exposure to an audience I would have never had access to otherwise. And in return, they get a really nice looking photo of their recipe, which is a win and to win. Heidi is a soulful business coach who supports women entrepreneurs. She helps them get clear on their business strategy, uplevel their mindset, trust their intuition to take inspired action. And what I learned from her is that fear is normal. Have a fear and you do it anyways. Not one of us up here that has created businesses or seven figure businesses or called in the husband or whatever has not felt all the fear and done it anyways. So yes, breathe. Yes, get into your heart. Yes, feel it and go effing do it. It's okay to be scared, but don't let that stop you from moving forward in life. I was scared to post my first YouTube video, and I was scared to post my first Instagram story, and I'm scared to even post this video. But I'm not gonna let the fear of me sounding dumb or the fear of what others will say about me stop me from putting this message out there for those that need to hear it. For lunch on day two, we went to Chipotle where we got our typical keto bowl. That was salad, guac, veggies, meat, sour cream, and cheese. Also, I did try the hot sauce. The red sauce is the one to go with. The green one does have the ingredient cornstarch, so you should probably avoid it. So, go for the red one. So, the next speaker is Saul Blinkoff. He's a Hollywood filmmaker, supervising producer at DreamWorks Animation, and is starting his new podcast, Life of Awesome. I should let you guys know that he's my favorite speaker. I have heard him on the Don't Keep Your Day Job podcast before and his episode will bring you to tears. If you want to listen to a feel-good story, I will link his episode in the description box below. So he dropped a lot of knowledge on us during his speech. The first thing we learned from him was the action steps we had to take in order to be great. You want to be great in life? It's really simple. The first thing we need to know is we need a goal. You have to have a goal. The next thing you need to know is what do I do well? What are my good qualities? What are, what are my gifts, my abilities, my talents? You know, the next thing you need to know is the places that you don't do well. And in that place that you don't do well, here comes the part that most people don't like to hear. That is where you put all your effort. You take the weakness that you have, and that's where you put your energy. Our flaws are simply the answer key to how we grow. No, nobody wakes up great at anything. So just because you think you're horrible at photography or cooking or not good with technology, it doesn't mean it always has to be like that. And you don't have to drop a lot of money or go back to school to work on those flaws. There's plenty of resources online that are easily accessible and able to do the same for a lot less. You just have to actually push yourself to work on them. So yeah, it's going to be hard and yeah, it's not going to be fun at all. And yeah, you're going to have to get uncomfortable. But we want to be uncomfortable because you get comfort, goodbye growth. And you know in your own life, the times you've had the most growth in your life are when you can invest yourself into something with struggle. We want struggle. Because it's going to make us into the person that we've always wanted to be. And that will make it so much more rewarding. So the next piece of knowledge he dropped on us was this. You have a passion, you have a gift and ability, you have an interest in something, the goal of life is not to wake up every day and go, how can I make myself happy? That's what four-year-olds do. The goal should not be just to make yourself happy or to make money or all those things. Forget that. The goal is, this is going to help me become a better person. The goal of life is to wake up every day and ask myself a question. How can I take responsibility for the world? Using my passion, using my gifts, using my ability. This spoke a lot to me because after I lost the weight on keto, I felt like I had to tell everyone about it. So many years I stayed overweight simply because I didn't know how to read a nutrition label and cook for myself. 
I can only imagine the amount of people out there who are the same way. That they hate cooking because they suck at it and that the only healthy thing they know how to meal prep is chicken breast, rice, and veggies. I want to help those people. I want to show people that there's other food to eat out there besides eggs and bacon on the keto diet and that it's okay to suck at cooking because I know what it's like to not want to even try cooking because I knew I was so bad at it and everyone online makes it look so easy. That's why you'll always catch me posting online when I make a mistake and proudly admit that I don't know how to cook because I want people to know that they're not alone in their ability. Since I've done that, I've received so many DMs from people that I've inspired them and brought them joy and have gotten them to go back into the kitchen and cook and that fills my heart with so much joy. It keeps me motivated to keep on pushing through these uncomfortable feelings because it might be hard and embarrassing for me, but it means something to someone out there. And a beautiful quote, don't ever forget you're created unique and special, just like everyone else. We're not in competition with anyone. The world doesn't need another Steven Spielberg. The world doesn't need another Kathy Heller. The world needs you. So the last speaker of the event was Barney Waters. He is currently the president of K-Swiss and has been in the footwear industry for 20 years. What I learned from him was how to get attention from brands so that they would want to collaborate with you. You do this by creating valuable content. And by valuable, I mean something that's entertaining, inspirational, or informational. And then you incorporate those brands into your content. And every single piece of content you put out there is going to help you get discovered. It's going to build up your portfolio and it's going to help refine the many different skills you're going to be learning along the way. I get asked if I get paid by Instagram to do what I'm doing because of all the work and effort I put into it. And the answer is no. But even though I don't get paid, I am improving my photography skills, my editing skills and my cooking skills as I create content on Instagram. So my Instagram feed can then act as a portfolio to potential brands and show them the type of quality content I'm able to produce. I actually went into this workshop hoping I would get the push I needed to make my dream of being a full-time keto content creator a reality. I had already been practicing a lot of the tips that the speakers gave so it was nice to see that I was already headed in the right direction but I almost thought that I was going to leave the workshop not knowing anything more than I already knew. And it was until Kathy went on stage and she told me exactly what I needed to hear. There's no shame in making a living. You can't serve the world if your cup is empty. Let's get clear that you don't have to only give and only be a nonprofit in order to tell yourself that it's okay for you to do something you love. Is that clear? When I was first writing music, all of my songs were like for the audience and I wrote things that were all to be uplifting and I said to my therapist at the time, I feel like it's so selfish just to write a song that I want to write because the audience came and it should be for them. And she's like, oh God, right, God forbid you just got up there and sang, gave people the pleasure of a nice evening, like it has to be therapy for them or else who are you to claim the stage for 30 minutes? Like there's a lot of self-doubt and issues and shame around making a living. No, the healing that can be done from actually having enough money and having more than enough money where you can now use your energy and time to do things like that and to share your message on a bigger stage. So there's no shame in saying, I'm a vessel. Who wants less oxygen? Who wants less water? Nobody. It's a resource. You need it. You should have as much oxygen as possible, as much water as possible, right? You should have as much money as possible. It's a resource. And if you're working hard and you're not getting money, it's a charity. Yeah, and then now you can't really be creative as much as possible and you can't give more. Unless there are certain people, that's all they want to do, that's how they want to do it. Although Mother Teresa herself said, it takes a checkbook to change the world. And if it wasn't, she said, for all of the incredible donors who were generous enough to meet me and hand me a check, there's no way I could do what I'm doing. It's funded work, right? You wanna really do big, big things? You gotta have some money.
A few of you guys have messaged me when would I have my next YouTube video out. Um, I originally thought this video would take like a weekend to make and then I realized that there's so much info in this that I wanted to get it right. I put a lot of work into this because I wanted to get Kathy's message across to those that needed to hear it. And it's kind of hard to do that when I'm running my Instagram, going to school, and working full time. Listening to Kathy's speech had made me realize that there is no shame in getting paid to do what you love. And I love nothing more than helping you guys stick to your keto diet by introducing you to different keto recipes that are out there. And I'd love to do it on a more consistent basis. So in order to make that possible, I've set up a Patreon page. I will link that below if you'd like to join me and be part of the Pat Pat fam. If you made it this far, I want to thank you so much for watching. I really wanted to make this video because I know there's people out there who don't think it's possible to make money doing what they love. If you know anybody like this, can you please share this video with them? Also, comment down below with that one thing that you would just love to do full time. And don't forget to pat 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 that subscribe button if you'd like to follow me as I turn my passion of keto into my full time career.